of their own land in the time of Osea the king. Right, so those ten tribes from Ephraim on down, including the portion of Levi, right? Go ahead. Who was Simon Lazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. Right. And he carried them over the water, and so came they into another land. Uh huh. Verse, verse 41. But they took the count, this counsel among themselves that they would lead the multitude. They did what? Lead the multitude. They left because most of the people, most of the people at, at, at this time, they were dwelling in the Eastern Hemisphere, right? But that's where multitudes of people were. And this stock of people left the multitudes of people. But why? All right, y'all, nine spiral. Uh, we're going to take a look at this Ezra's uh, 13 and we're going to get the 100 percent truth. All right. About it. Because. You know. To me, everybody's perception is off. And so. uh and we're going to do that, man. We're going to get the truth. We're going to get the simple truth, uh, you know, just by going in Scripture. Uh, we're going to look at, I think it is uh, 2 Kings uh, chapter 17. All right. Of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. So... Our people were the first people to come over to the so-called Americas. Right. We were the first people to establish civilizations over here, right? We were the first people over here doing trades with other people from the, the Eastern Hemisphere, right? Go ahead. That they might there keep their statues. They might what? Keep their statues, uh -huh. which they never kept in their own land. So they came over here to try to keep the law, statues, and commandments that they couldn't keep on the other side because, as it said, give me Hosea 4, 17. The northern kingdom started to go off into idolatry, right? When they was around the multitudes of people. Now, Judah started to started to do the same. They followed after the, but the northern kingdom was consumed with idolatry, right? Bring it out. Hosea four and seventeen. Ephraim is joined to idols. Ephraim is what? Joined to idols. So when it says Ephraim, it's referencing the whole northern kingdom. And when it says now, I've never heard that before so y'all out there let me know if uh ephraim is referring to the whole northern kingdom now i have heard israel being referred uh, to as the northern kingdom but hey who knows when it says judah is representing the whole southern kingdom right go ahead sometimes it says israel too when it's referencing the northern kingdom go ahead let him alone. Do what? Let him alone. So at one point, the whole northern kingdom was joined into idols, and the most I said, leave him alone, bro, because I, I got to They got to I got to I got to They got something they have to fulfill too, and they gonna go so far off, so far left, they gonna come back right too. But right now, at this time, leave him alone. Right? Okay, go ahead. And they and they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and hell stilled the flood, till they were passed over. For through the, for though the country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half, right. in the same region is called Osiris. So Osiris, if you go into history, you'll know that Osiris is America, right? So they journeyed from the left side of Africa all the way from the bottom to the Americas. All right, y'all. So I picked off right here, right, uh, because he said something very important. And we're also going to take a look at it. In one second. Watch this. Man, they got this thing all the way twisted up. Watch this. Now, when, it, when the Lord talks about country, it doesn't literally mean the country that we know mod modern day today we know as countries. Uh -huh. You know, he normally just means a landmass when he says country, 
right? Landmass, right? So, so let's read again. But, but they took his counsel among themselves that they would lead the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where no mankind would dwell. So, they, so we've now established that they left the multitude of the heathen. So Assyria would have been, so let's put these maps up. So Assyria would have been around this area, which is around Turkey or Iran, around that area. And as you can see, it borders the, the, the Euphrates River. So they would have been coming from that side all the way through the river. Right. So let's so let's read 41 again. But they took his counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathens. So that means the Assyrians. Right. And go forth into a further country. So they wanted to go somewhere different. All right, so if you read the verse, and we're going to take a look at uh, Ezra's 13. If you read it, you know, in context, all right, you can clearly uh, surmise that it is uh, it's speaking about the end times, right? And also it's speaking about, you know, uh, captivity, all right, so it's uh, it's many different uh, dynamics there, but I think what he's failing to realize is that it was a captivity. So no, they didn't want to go into another land. You see that? Watch this. So let's so let's read 41 again. But they took his counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathens. So that means the Assyrians. Right. And go forth into a further country. So they wanted to go somewhere. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They, they just wanted to go somewhere different. Come on, man. Come on. What are we doing? All right. Let's hear him out. Different. Where never mankind dwelt, where no one was there. There was no nobody there. That they might there keep their statues, which they never kept in their own hands. So, that, so the thinking behind it, all of these 10 tribes, the thinking behind it was that they would keep the law that they never really bothered to keep when we had our own land, when they had when they were in their own land before captivity. 43 and they entered into you see that now he just said captivity but in the same breath not too long ago y'all heard him right as soon as he read the verse right oh yeah they wanted to go into an uh another land uh, a different land. they wanted to go how can you want something in captivity let's rock into the Ephraites by the narrow passages of the river. So they entered into this river, the Ephraites, right, which borders Iran and Turkey. So they entered into it. Uh, um, by the narrow passages of the river. So they got to the narrow passages of the river and they entered the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and hell stilled the flood till they were passed over. So the Most uh, uh, he stopped the flood. He parted the sea. See that? See how he just lied? It don't say that. It don't say that, man. All right. See, he let the still the, the water be still. Uh, so he stopped the flow basically, so that they can pass over through the narrow passages of the river. Now, this is not extraordinary because we know in quite a few scriptures, we've seen the Lord do that. You know, there's there's been a, a, a quite a few incidents in the Bible where the Lord has parted the river so that Israel can pass over. So this was nothing out of the ordinary. So let's carry on. And through the country, that country, there was a great way to go. So country means landmass. 
there was a great way to go, namely for a year and a half. So they kept walking. So after the, the river was parted, they kept walking. And the same region is called Asarif. So where they landed up, or a huge chunk of where they landed up, was called Asarif. Uh, so let's read 45 again. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half. And the same region is called Asarif. Then dwelt there they, they, they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come. So they're still there today. So they, so they dwelt there right, right up until now. They're still there, or latter times. The highest showed, the high, highest shall stay the springs of the stream again, that they may go through. Therefore, sawest thou the multitude with beasts. So, the Lord is going to do it again. He's going to part the water again. Because as we know, there's been quite a few incidences in the Bible where the Lord did it, where he parted the sea so that Israel can, cr can cross over. So this is nothing extraordinary. And the Bible says that he will do it again. So let's carry on. Uh, and the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again, and they may go through. Therefore, sorrowest thou the multitude with peace. 48. But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders. Right. So. When they were on the route to Asarath, on this route, so from from Assyria all the way past the Euphrates River, they they kept going across the Arabian deserts all the way through the land of Israel. Right? Now the borders just means just means Jerusalem. It just means Jerusalem. So they passed all the way through that landmass, all the way down, cut through Israel, all the way past Jerusalem. Now, some Israelites choose to stay behind in, is, in Jerusalem. Why? So that they can obey the law. Because remember, it, during Passover, all Israelites <laughs> had to go to Jerusalem, you see. And there was other feast days whereby they had to go, had to be in Jerusalem too. So some stayed behind because they're passing home anyway. So might as well stay behind. Why are we going to go further than that? So some of them decided to stay behind. So this is what the scripture is saying. So it says, but those that... See that? Now this is why it's wrong to add to scripture. All right. Change shit because it don't say that. Now he just said, this is what scripture is saying. All right. All right, fine. Uh, you can have your own presumption. All right, but that has nothing to do with it because you're dealing with another dynamic. All right, you're dealing with what? The end times. Matter of fact, he skipped the whole. Oh, let me see something. Let me see something. That be left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders. Now, when he destroyed the multitude of the nations that are now, you, you just heard him right now. All right, let's get this. Uh, where he was, All right, let's go 46. Uh, then they dwelt there until the last times, and now, when they are about to come again, the most high will stop the channels of the river. That nigga said, park to sea. Again, so they may be able to pass over. Therefore, you saw the multitude gathered together in peace. Shalom. All right, you see at the top right here. Uh, the Most High Savior, King David, is gathering the Most High's people. As and I, and as for you seeing himself, uh, him gather Shalaki to himself another multitude that was peaceable. See that? Now, what he uh, failed to mention is this part right here. But those who are left of your people, talking to Ezra. Who are found within my holy borders shall be saved. It had nothing to do with what he was talking about back then. You see that? 
All right, Con, Con, uh, like I said, well, I didn't say it, but I'm not going to call out the names of, you know, uh, the channels or anything like that. Uh, but this Aqua here, you know, seems to think that Arzareth, all right, uh, is, you know, way over there somewhere uh, in the Asia continent. Could, you know, you know, that could be, couldn't be further from the truth. All right, we're going to get down to the bottom of it. Uh, I'm actually use the Ark um, AO. All right, to uh, pretty much uh, identify, you know, the land mass, you know what I'm saying, which is going to match up uh, with Second Kings uh, chapter 17. But nonetheless, let's go. Let's rock, all right? And this ain't no knock to, you know, them. You know what I'm saying? We're just getting to the bottom of it, you know. Uh, that's why it's important. You know, orientation is important. It's important to know your land mass, all right? Uh, reading Ezekiel, you know, you will understand uh, why the Most High uh, thinks highly of the land, too. All right? He thinks that... And knowing that you're on uh, the correct landmass is important. Matter of fact, he even tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the land uh, in the book of Ezekiel. So, yeah, it's, it's very important uh, to know uh, where you're at. All right, let's rock. Okay, so you have the hidden country of Tataria, which is not on modern maps today. You've got Arzareth, and in second address, it is spelt with Z instead of an S. This is where the 10 tribes went to. This is our region, and I believe this is, let me see from my notes. So anytime you see the A-N-I-A, that's the Ten Tribes as well. We got Japan over here in the corner. So you know that the Pacific is that way. You know the West is that way. Um, the U.S. So it's very easy for the, the uh, Ten Tribes to have come over. This wasn't just a vast land. It was an empire with many, many people, many different animals, a lot of wealth. All right. And you know what? Uh, since she want to show maps, you know what I'm saying? What do we know? Okay. Who can we factor in, uh, right, that... Uh, you know, would, would 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 pretty much give us uh, some insights uh, on who was in America, all right, and why. All right, so we're dealing with the maps, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to pull out a couple of maps, but that person I'm talking about is who? Christopher Columbus. All right, because it's, uh, you know, it's easy to see uh, that Christopher Columbus uh, was himself uh, dealing with what? Scripture. Why do you wish to sail west? To open a new route to Asia. Asia is the richest kingdom, the land of spices and gold. At the moment, there are only two ways of reaching it. By sea, sailing around the African continent. The journey takes a year, 
or by land, but the Turks have closed this road to all Christians. There is a third way. By sailing west across the ocean sea. Bullshit, Mr. Handman! The distance is unknown. It's said to be infinite. Superstition. I believe the Indies are no more than 750 leagues west of the Canary Islands. How can you be so certain? The calculations of uh, Toscanelli, Maradotti, Esdras. Esdras is a Jew. So what's worse? Two minutes, and already you're a bad man. For telling the truth? Yes. We are burning people for less. The men you're about to confront have no emotion. All right, so you see that, right? Christopher Columbus pretty much gives the whole thing away. All right, he tells you uh, who he was uh, coming to America to look for. All right, and that is the most highest people. Why is Christopher Columbus studying Ezra, the prophet? Ezra's. All right, so let's take it from the top. Uh, also, I mean, there's so many clues that you know he gives, right? And so let's uh, let's see if we can catch another one. Why did you wish to sail west? To open a new route to Asia. To find to find a new route to Asia. All right. All right, so where did it all start from? All right, because we can see that, you know, we can see when the trickery started. All right. And again, as you can see, during the Dark Ages, right, 1531. And so when did they start hijacking names? All right. And we know that Christopher Columbus was looking for Asia. All right. And uh cafe or uh kata or kate uh, some maps say kateo all right here now that was 1531 it's 1530 all right which is even more damning because here while they hijack asia all right uh one thing that stays consistent is India Superior, all right? Cathay, Cathay, Prester John, all right? So we know Prester John to be King David. So this would be right about where Jerusalem or Zion would be, right? And so Columbus ended up right about this area, Cuba, Hispaniola, all right? Did he go or sail west across, right? Did he sail across? No. Because you can't navigate the treacherous Atlant Atlant Atlantic Shalaki that way. Uh, La China. All right, Cateo, India Superior. Why is it superior over here? La Florida, all right. Rio. 
I'm just looking at some old maps. All right, shout out to 432 Drop. India Superior, all right. Cathay, Cathay, Qatar. Cibola, all right. Seven cities of gold. All right, so that would put Columbus in America, right? La China, Cathay. Mangu. India Superior. But you can't, you know, you just can't transport uh, millions of people across large bodies of water like that you can't even do that today all right now crossing uh the atlantic uh, it's just not gonna happen and so you see columbus said i know a third way all right so which way most likely did columbus uh take and i personally believe that he went up top and came down uh, the Mississippi. Now, I do have my reasons. Uh, I will just say, uh, check out the book, uh, Life on the Mississippi River, all right? Mark Twain. All right, so uh, take this. Uh, these would be ocean gyres, all right? And so whatever direction it goes in, that's, that's, you know, which way, uh, the boat is going or ship. I don't care what it is. It can be a, a 20 story building. All right. It is going in the direction of the arrows. It's like highways. All right. Let me pause there right quick. And so, in my eyes, it makes sense that they went up top, you know, uh, island skip. This current would have took them here, and they would have ended up where? Up in this area. Come down to Mississippi, Hispaniola. Because this way would have simply took uh, longer, all right? And definitely uh, that little uh, little diagram thing uh, showing that they came this way, come on now. And we're talking about transporting a nation of people. So we're talking about millions upon millions. I'm going to try my best in a few minutes here to prove that Osarath in scripture is actually linking to America. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the records, uh, Second Edris chapter 13, verses 36 through 47, uh, that Christopher Columbus himself actually used to find what we, who we call today the North American Indian. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not just. You see that? All right, and this is not new information. Uh, but like I said, man, there's so many clues, uh, you know, even the fact that, you know, he used uh, a Hebrew uh, interpreter, all right, uh, to talk to people over here in America uh, named Louis uh, de Torres. It's rock. It's cooked. Not just a North American Indian that was in this particular land, but predominantly they are the ones that were scattered throughout those, the Americas, South America, and uh, you know you have parts of North, you know North America as well. But of course, there were other Hebrew people. You know, um, certain parts of Naphtali is there, Reuben, Simeon, 
some some parts of the Zebulun. You will find Zebulunites there uh, all throughout South America and even North America. All right, so you know I rock with uh, Holy Vessel uh, Thirty Four. I will, you know, shout him out. Uh, but you know, man, everybody is not privy to. Uh, everybody ain't ready to uh, understand that massive deception, right? Uh, that uh, we came from over there, all right? Um, or everything started over there, you know. And this is, you know, this is basically. Uh, the meat and potatoes, you know, of the video is that when I go or uh, when we go into Second Kings uh, chapter 17, and especially those that are aware that everything happened over here, and mainly uh, biblically, we're talking north america all right and the evidence is like uh the naysayers that uh you know they're down here but the evidence uh that everything being over here is way up here all right even down to uh the names And, you know, uh, shout out to, you know, the likes of uh, uh, AO, uh, uh, UB News, uh, Drop. all right, uh, Pure Mio, as well as myself, all right, who has done uh, a great job proving that everything is right in our backyard. So now all you do is you go to you go to www.jewishencyclopedia.com. You put in the word Osiris, or you can just click the word or the letter A, and it'll give you all the you know the uh, words in between A through Z or whatever. And it is say uh, Osarath, A R Z A R E T H. And it says, these are not my words. You can look this up. I'm going to put the link on this video so you all can read it yourself. Uh -huh. And it says, the name of the land beyond the great river, far away from the habitation of man, in which the ten tribes of Israel will dwell, observing the laws of Moses until the time of restoration, according to. Uh, there you got some. Uh, Okay, it says, according to Columbus, identified America with this land. Okay, it's not my words. Christopher Columbus identified America with this land. That's there is actually information that confirms this. This is in a Jewish encyclopedia. All right, there you go. The name of the land beyond the great river. Far away from the habitation of man. All right. Uh, in which the ten tribes of Israel uh, will dwell, observing the laws of Moshe until the time of restoration. All right. Columbus identified America. Uh, with this land this is very interesting right here the name of the land uh, the name of the land Shalaki beyond the great river it didn't say beyond the great ocean so could uh, second as uh, second Ezra's chapter 13 
could we be dealing with an isolated event here, right? Or rather remote, a remote area. We shall see. All right, y'all. So we got another one. All right. Um, you know, he has that, you know, that similar problem. All right. You got your land masses twisted. Um, you know, this is something that they have sold us on uh, since we uh, were younger. Uh, you know, growing up in their school systems. Um, so it's, it's understandable that people tend to, you know, hold on to it. Uh, when the evidence uh, that says otherwise is overwhelming. All right. It is overwhelming. But he bring out some points. All right. Now, by far, this is. Uh, this is the only brother, the only op. I have seen to have, uh, I guess, paid attention uh, in school uh, in reading comprehension class, right? Because everybody seems to get um, through and two uh, mixed up when it comes to Second Ezra uh, chapter 13. Why? I do not know. But anyway, let's uh let's cook a bit. Let's cook a bit. It said, and hell was still the flood. That was the sign that he showed for them. Let's move on. Till so they were passed over, not through the river, they was passed over the river. Okay. Great point. Okay. See that? And so that further insinuates that we're dealing with a remote area, right? So it's the little things. It's the little things. All right, let's cook. Okay, so that means they went across the river. They didn't go through the river down down the um down the uh indian ocean around the southern tip of, of africa and across the atlantic ocean that's a false doctrine man and them brothers are gonna pay for blasphemy blasphemy inscription in, in the word of the most hot you know that's they're gonna pay for that okay so you don't see that no way in there okay that's big let's go to 45. it says for through that country okay through that country Mm -hmm. There was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. Okay, so it says for through that country. What country was it? Was it speaking of that they went through? Let's find out. And the same region is called Arsara. Okay, so that's the country that they went through. That wasn't a destination. That was the country they went through. That was a country that was mentioned in the scripture that they went through. All right, let's deal with it. All right, let's deal with uh, Second Ezra, uh, chapter thirteen, uh, verse thirty-nine through fifty. All right, <clears throat> all right, let's deal with it and uh, put this thing in context. Give me one second. Let me get some water. Here we go. 
And as for your seeing him, all right, we're talking about the Most High's Messiah, King David. Gather to himself another multitude that was peaceable. All right, so remember the video I made, all right, uh, three groups, one salvation. All right, we're dealing with uh, groups because here uh, it says another multitude. All right, so uh, some people uh, have already already been gathered. Why? Because they're already, uh, or let's just say they're closer, all right, to home base. All right, now we're going to deal with uh, North America in a minute, all right? Uh, these are the 10, and some, uh, some versions say 9, all right, which nine would make sense to me because uh we're just talking about the difference between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom all right um these were the ten tribes which were led away from their own land don't say continent here and or it's not uh, specific, right? But we're wondering, uh, was this or uh, is uh, this multitude, uh, is it dealing with the remote area? All right, that's what we're trying to find out. All right, so uh, it says, okay, which were led away uh, from their own land into captivity in the days of King Hosea, whom Shalmaneser, the king of the Assyrians. All right, now keep this in mind. Assyrians, Assyrians led captive. Uh, he took them across the river, not the ocean but across the river you see that now we're cooking and they were taken into another land well how can you go into another uh how can you go to another continent all right but you're just crossing a river See that? And you see, so you see how when we read in context, right? And we haven't even got uh, gotten to uh, Second Kings chapter seventeen, all right? Because all we're going to do is just precept, uh, put precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. But they formed this plan for themselves that they would leave the multitude of the nations, all right? Meaning, in North America, right, we're dealing with many nations all right and so if you're rocking with scripture you know then it's, it's very apparent that israel has always dwelt near heathens or around heathens or uh you know, the American Indian, all right, was not just the only nation that was rocking on the continent of Shem. 
or Amaru Khan. We're talking North and South. According to scripture, right? And so this would make sense uh, that they would leave the multitude of the nations and go to a more distant region. If I'm in my home and I'm going to a more distant region, like I'm in the uh, front part, if I go to the bedroom, all right, that's more distant than the den, right? So keeping in mind, it's pretty much describing what a remote area where mankind uh, had never uh, lived. And so I doubt that uh, this read the way it does. All right. But nevertheless, the evidence is pushing us towards what? A remote area. Uh, this could have read heathen. All right. Or, you know, hell. You know that we have uh, the originals. All right. The aborigine. The indigenous. The Adamite. We also have mankind. So it doesn't necessarily mean where uh, no human being has lived. But just, you know, could simply be where no Israelite had lived. Or that there are, uh, that there at least, Shalaki, they might keep their statues, uh, which they had not kept in their own land. And we're just talking the North America, uh, uh, North America landmass. And they went in by the narrow passages of the Euphrates River. For at that time, the Most High performed signs for them and stopped the channels of the river until they had passed over. Through that region, there was a long way to go, a journey of a year and a half. And that country is called Azeroth. So again, uh, did they journey to Azeroth? No. Uh, reading comprehend comprehension tells us what? Uh, that they journeyed through. Azeroth. Does it say? Uh, does it say that uh, they left Azeroth? No. It just said they journeyed through. Let's go back to forty-three. And they went in by the narrow passages of the Euphrates River. For at that time, the most high performed signs for them and stopped the channels of the river. Until they had passed over. So a river has channels. Hmm. See that? And so you see how it can make sense that the most high stopped the channels of the river, right? Because according to our understanding, we are somewhere 
over here, right? So Zion, Jerusalem, will be somewhere here, right? Somewhere in here. Once I stop, all right, all we're doing is trying to trace the footsteps. Stop the channels of the river. Of the river. All right, these will be the channels. Tributaries and things. So that we could cross over the Euphrates, right? Because they went in by the narrow passages, right? See that? Narrow passages into the Euphrates so that they can cross over. So that means that would put uh, the tribes that were uh, led away captive somewhere over here, right? It's the only way. All right, so let's take a look at our maps. All right, so I'll go ahead and credit uh, UBZ, uh, UB News for this one right here. All right, we're going to look at uh, one from uh, AO in a sec. All right, so Utah, Utah, all right? So that will put us somewhere over here, right? So... We were taken captive, right? Or let's just say the, uh, those tribes, right? We're taken captive. And so, like I said, that would have put them here. All right, and so you see the different nations, right? Leave the multitude of the nations, all right? Going to a distant region. Our right, Euphrates River is here. All right, Red Sea. All right, we know that uh, California was an island on older maps. And this body of water on older maps is named the Red Sea. All right, you can go on Google Earth and find Mount Zion, all right, Mount Pisgah. All right, you got Mizraim. Syria, Babylon, all right. All right, so this is a uh, uh, AO's map, and as you can see, it's not far off, not at all. It's pretty much uh, spot on. But Ayo, uh, he pretty much, uh, you know, opens the gate. Uh, great work uh, he did. Uh, you know, putting things together on this model. All right, all right. 
All right, y'all. Uh, let's deal with Second Kings chapter seventeen. Uh, this is going to blow, you know, the whole thing wide open. Uh, it's, it's going to give us uh, context, and it's also going to match up, uh, you know, with the maps of you know our community uh, and. In which we in, in which we believe uh, that everything is over here. All right, everything. If you're dealing with uh, this book, in particular uh, the Old Testament, then everything is in America. All right, read. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hoshea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel uh -huh. nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Read. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hoshea became his servant and gave him presents. See that? So we're dealing with the same king of Assyria that's in 2nd Ezra chapter 13, right? All right, read. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea, mm -hmm. for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and brought no present to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Uh -huh. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. That See that? Now, don't that fit, uh, you know, the maps of our community? That these nations dealt with each other, all right? Assyria dealt with uh, Egypt. So that would have had to be in a remote area, right? All right, read. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. Uh -huh. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor, by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. Huh? And so, if you're wondering where uh, those tribes were taken, we just read it. In the ninth year, of Hosea. All right. Hosea was uh, reigning as king, all right, in Israel. The king of Assyria took Samaria. All right. So we also see uh, King Hosea. All right. In second answers. All right, so <clears throat> in the ninth year of uh, Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria. The king of Assyria took Samaria. How did those tribes go into captivity? The king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria. Assyria. And placed them in Ahala and in Habor by the river of Gozen. 
and in the city of the Medes. All right. And so it wasn't, uh, you know, just, uh, well, in context, uh, Hala and Habar and the river of Gozen and in the city of the Medes would be where? All in Assyria. Huh? Read. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, uh -huh. and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, All right. and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. All right, read. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God, uh -huh. and they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. Read. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill uh -huh. and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them. Read on. And wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. Uh -huh. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Read on. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets uh -huh. and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets. Read. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks uh -huh. like to the neck of their fathers that uh -huh. did not believe in the Lord their God. Read. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers, uh -huh. and his testimonies, which he testified against them. Uh -huh. And they followed vanity, and became vain, and went after the heathen that were the round heath. about them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. Round about them. Heathen. Round about them. Uh, which uh, further... Uh, strengthens uh, our maps and what we believe to be over here. See that? Read on. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. Yeah, read and they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire uh -huh. and used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. I now read. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and uh -huh. removed them out of his sight. There yeah. was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Uh -huh. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. Read on. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel. Oh. The seed of Israel. You see that? And so this would have been a time of dispersion. Read and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of spoilers, until he had cast them out of his sight. Uh -huh. For he rent Israel from the house of David. Uh -huh. And they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king, and Jeroboam drave Israel from following the Lord, and made them sin a great sin. Great sin. Read. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. Uh -huh. They departed not from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, his sight. Now read. as he had said by all his servants, the all prophets. The prophets. Uh -huh. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cutha and from Ava and from Hamath and from sephar Vaim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. Uh -huh. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there, that they feared not the Lord, 
Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. See that? I want to touch on something before I inadvertently uh, messed up the screen. Give me one second. All right, come, come. All right. Now I took us back, right? I took us back. Because we need to get this right. Chapter 17 pretty much uh, just blows all the camp theories and uh whoever believed that you know anything's over there uh in africa or uh those uh land masses right but second king also fits our narrative all right now pay attention to verse 23 until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. There you go. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. Now watch this. 24 is going to further um, insinuate, all right, as we surmise, uh, is that we're dealing with uh, an isolated event and also a remote area as cook. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cutha and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sephar Vaim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they yes. possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. See that? Go back, go back. Go back. Verse 24, and the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, all right? Just keep in, keep in mind the maps, all right, that I just showed you, our maps, all right? And that's uh, word to you, BZ, and that's word to AO. And from uh, Cutha, and from Ava or Ava and from Hamath and from uh, how you pronounce that? Say for Vayam and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. All right. And so you see the swapping out. So Israel was led away captive from where? Samaria. So Samaria is in what? Israel. You have to be dealing with the remote area if you can swap people like this. You see that? This ain't no shit that's going on uh, across oceans and shit. You see that? All right, verse twenty-five. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go through this whole 
uh, chapter 17. All right, because it's important. Read. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore, the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Read. Wherefore, they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore, he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Read. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. You see that? So, when the king of Assyria took these other nations to dwell in the land of Israel, because Israel had sinned against our power, right? The king of Assyria swapped out Israel for these other nations. That's dealing with a remote area. Not only that, but once they got in the land, because the land is so holy, right? They started worshiping other gods, all right? And they did not know the manner in which to worship on sacred ground. That was a problem. So how did they solve that problem? Verse 28, then one of the priests, no, nah, 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 uh, 27, all right. Then the king of Assyria commanded saying, carry uh, thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence and let them go and dwell there and let him teach them the manner of the power of the land. So if we're talking about across bodies of oceans, you mean to tell me the king of Assyria sent for a few priests all the way over across the treacherous Atlantic just to bring a few back so they can teach these heathens the manner. in which the power should be worshipped. You see that? <laughs> so that further uh, illustrates and, 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 and radiates and, and uh, projects uh, that we're dealing with a remote area. Hmm? Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. Howbeit, every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Succoth Benoth, and the men of Cuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sepharvites burnt their children in fire to Adramalek and Anamalek, the gods of Sepharvaim. Read. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places mm -hmm. and sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes, or after their ordinances, or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, 
with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. Sacrifice, read. And the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore. And ye shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget. Neither shall ye fear other gods. But the Lord your God ye shall fear. Uh-huh. And he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. Uh-huh. Howbeit, Howbeit, they did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. All right, so uh, with the help of, with, with the help of uh, A.O., shout out to A.O., y'all. Uh, we're going to pretty much, you know, bring this thing home. And so, uh, I hope Ayo hey, don't mind me rocking out. We gonna rock out, y'all. All right. Let's rock. According to the 1892 book, The Mound Builders, Their Works and Their Relics, Volume 1, by Stephen D. Pete, page 186. We have divided the Mound Builder territory into different districts. The method of defense varied according to the location. In the northern regions, the wilder and more uncivilized races dwelt. These erected stockades resembling Caesar's forts, built in the forests of Gaul. And the central regions were architecturalists. They lived in walled villages resembling those of medieval times. The fortifications resembling castles. In the southern districts we find the system of pyramids, which resemble those of the ancient people of the east, especially the Assyrian and Chaldean. There were only two mound building civilizations on earth, the North American mound builders and the quote unquote Assyrians of the Middle East. Now the mounds of the Middle East include the mound of Nimrud, the Sultan Tepe mound, Gurdi Kalarak mound, Bakr Awa mound and the Sharizer mound. Now the mounds of the North American mound builders include the Cahokia mounds, including the Monk's Mound, the Spiro Mounds, Serpent Mound, the Poverty Point Mounds, and thousands more. There are thousands more mounds in the North American continent than in modern day Assyria. The North American mounds historically 
are some of the oldest man-made structures on earth. Genesis tells us that Assur was one of the first cities built after the flood. Yet, according to archaeologists, the mounds of America predate the mounds of the Middle East. When you look at American mounds, they are uniform complex and clearly built using some form of mathematics. They also are aligned with astronomical events such as planetary motion and specific stars. There is clear artistry and high architectural knowledge that was put into the construction of these mounds. However, when you look at the Assyrian mounds, they almost look like natural formations and they have no artistic technique at all, neither do they align with any astronomical events. As you can see, the Middle Eastern mounds completely lack aesthetic value, unlike the American ones, which are much, much older. These could have been constructed recently. It would not even be a reach to assume that around the 1830s or 40s, some Europeans went to the land with construction workers and heaped up big piles of dirt and called them mounds just so they can mimic the true Assyria, which is in America. Most of the mounds were constructed on the eastern half of the country, east of the Mississippi River. However, we have evidence that the mysterious mound builders made their way as far west as Oregon. The Southern Willamante Valley in Oregon is an ideal area to focus LIDAR's unique architectural capabilities. The region is heavily wooded and is known to contain hundreds of low-lying earthwork features or mounds. Idaho was also known to have a few mounds. Two ancient burial mounds in Franklin County were recorded by James Martineau in 1876 and are a part of a rich Native American history in the Cache Valley. Miss Foster, an elder citizen of Franklin County, Idaho, remembers as a youngster visiting her grandmother's home that overlooks the ancient mounds. The Indians would camp down by the mounds and do ceremonial dances, she said. It was scary. My grandmother told me not to worry. They wouldn't be there long and they soon left. Ken Cannon, a USU anthropologist who worked on the Bear River Massacre site, said that he heard about burial sites in Franklin County. If they are burial grounds, I would guess they are from the Fremont period. 2,000 to 700 years ago, he said, Idaho does have specific laws that protect burial sites. Now, Franklin County is at the southern border of Idaho and the northern border of Utah. And as we know, this is the area around the territory of Judah, which would match the scripture saying that the Assyrians stretched their territory all the way towards Judah and at one point even invaded the cities of Judah. The Adena Mounds are the oldest mounds north of the Ohio River. Ironically, it sounds like what the Hebrews called Eden or Eden. The scriptures tell us about two different Edens. There was the well-known Garden of Eden as well as the city of Assyria called Eden. Ezekiel 27 and 23, Haran and Cana and Eden and the merchants of Sheba Ashur and Chilamad were thy merchants. When you go to the Hebrew and you look at the word Eden, it's Aden. As we can see, the land of Eden is mentioned with Haran, Cana, Ashur, and Chilamad, four lands of Assyria, with the exception of the merchants of Sheba. These all traded with Tyre. The Adena culture was located in the area now known as Ohio. 
Amos chapter 1 verse 5 states that Eden was a part of Aram Damascus, an empire from the land of Padan, Aram, a region in Assyria that spread west possibly due to Assyria's rapid growth. The Aramaic people lived in Assyria, but were actually more related to the Hebrews. Their empire spread west to Gilead, but when they started to oppress the Israelites, Yah condemned them to captivity in the land of Kir. Kir was a place in Assyria that meant fortress or castle. Remember the excerpt from the 1892 book, The Mound Builders, Their Works and Their Relics, Volume 1. By Stephen D. Pete, page 186, it states that the mound builders in the central part of their territory built medieval looking castles. These castles were later destroyed in the 1800s and were never heard from again. Today, all Hebrews descend from Aramaeans. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were Aramaeans. The original habitation of the land of Aram was Haran, also known as Padan Aram. In Genesis, 28 and 2, Isaac commands Jacob to go to the land of Padan Aram to his uncle's house. In Genesis 29 and 1, he makes it there and Padan Aram is called the land of the people of the east. This land is later called Haran in verse 4. Haran in Hebrew simply means mountain climbers, indicating that the land of Haran had villages in the mountains, which also means the mountains were not too steep and were level enough for habitation. Padan Aram means extended highland or extended plateau. The part of the modern Mesopotamia that is east of modern Israel does not have any mountains at all and therefore does not match this description. But you know it does match the description perfectly? The Appalachian Mountains. It's literally an extended plateau and also heaps of stones the same heaps of stones that Jacob built when he left Padan Aram can be found all throughout the Appalachians today, which indicates that these heaps of stone were built as a tradition in Padan Aram to solve problems without conflict, basically as a peace treaty. Also, according to Amos chapter 1 verse 5, the plain of Avin was also included as a part of the Aram Damascus Empire. According to Ezekiel 30 and 17, Avin was originally an Egyptian territory. This means Avin was probably in the Missouri, Illinois region. If Aram and Egypt were a part of the same empire in the Middle East, then the Levant would completely be engulfed, which we can see during the reign of Thutmose III, who supposedly lived during the time of Joshua. However, it would make perfect sense in the American model because all empires touch each other. Genesis chapter 10 verse 10 And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Out of that land went forth Ashur and built in Nineveh and the city of Rehoboth and Kala. There was a group of Indians in the eastern coast of North America who literally called themselves the Rock Indians. The French then called them the Iroquois. Around their territory we have Lake Erie, all in similar etymology as the city of Erek, also known as Ur of the Chaldees where Abraham dwelt. Then when we look at Akkad, the American Indians of Eastern North America also had a territory which they called Akkadi. Now let's look at Kalna. In Hebrew, Kalna is Kana. Kana was also a territory of the Iroquois Indians on the eastern coast of North America, which was called Kanata, which later became known as Canada, the country today. And then when we look at the land of Haran, as we mentioned previously, there was a tribe in the eastern coast of North America called the Huron Indians and this is where we get the name of the Lake Huron. 
and they live very close to the Appalachian Mountains. The first 11 of Jacob's sons were born in Haran. Now we read in Genesis 30 and 14 that Reuben went out into the field and found mandrakes. In Hebrew, mandrakes are called dude, which translates to love apples because they look like female ovaries. They are a sweet ground fruit known as may apples. May apples, also known as American mandrakes, are indigenous to eastern North America around the Appalachian Mountains. This is the same exact location of where Haran would be on an American model. This is no coincidence whatsoever. This is another perfectly fitting puzzle piece. Also in Genesis 30, we see three other North American plants mentioned. The poplar tree, the hazelnut tree, and the chestnut tree. Poplars, also known as Leodendron tuliparifera, scientifically, is also indigenous to Eastern North America, around the Appalachians, in the exact same location as Haran on an American model. Same thing with the hazelnut trees. These are indigenous to North America, Europe, and the Middle East. But among the American hazelnuts, they grow solely in Eastern America, around the Appalachian Mountains, in the same exact location of Haran on an American model. Now it gets very interesting with the chestnut tree, which don't even grow in the Middle East. In fact, to this day, they can only be found in Europe, China, Japan, and of course, Eastern North America around the Appalachian Mountains, the same exact location as Haran on an American model. More perfectly and strategically fitting puzzle pieces. Numbers chapter 24 and verse 24. And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim and shall afflict Ashur and shall afflict Eber and he shall also perish forever. This prophecy came to pass in 1539 when ships from southwestern Europe came to North America, specifically to Florida under Hernando de Soto, when he went into the east coast of the United States and slaughtered many tribes of Indians and enslaved others. The true descendants of Chittim in scripture are the Romans. And the coast of Rome was from Italy to Spain. When Rome conquered the fake Assyria, it was not by ship because the Middle Eastern Assyria was a landlocked nation, not at all surrounded by water. Near the Shawnee Creek of Oklahoma, there was also discovered a tablet that depicted the symbol of the Assyrian fertility goddess. This particular symbol is an illuminated sun with a crescent moon below it and with various cuneiform letters beneath that. Because Oklahoma was one of those territories where Mizraim and Aram touched each other and the Aramaeans worshiped the same gods and goddesses as Assyria, it is no surprise that this artifact was found here. Near Quaker City, Ohio, an amateur Indian arrowhead collector discovered a cuneiform tablet in 1978. Its ancient provenance was established by David Owen, professor of Near Eastern Studies at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. He translated the Sumerian text, which had been composed by a man named Uri in the month of Dumazi, which is late June, in the year the Ensi, or the ruler of Karzida, was elevated. Now pay attention. The author of this tablet's name was Uri. Just like I stated previously, Uri is indeed an ancient Sumerian, Assyrian, Babylonian word. And we just so happen to have one of the great lakes in North America having the same exact name. Karzida was the second city of worship for the same moon god Likewise, referenced by the inscription on Chief Joseph's tablet, 
suggesting a relationship between his family heirloom and the Quaker City find, which came to light years after his death. In the book, Lost Colonies of Ancient America, a comprehensive guide to pre-Columbian visitors who really discovered America. Anywhere between page 36 to 39, depending on what copy of the book you have, it states, many such Ur the third tablets have been found in the US, states Professor Owen, including some tablets dug up a few years ago from the ruins of an old apartment house in Auburn, New York. So many tablets spread over half the continent from Montana to Georgia, Ohio, and New York. So according to this professor, there's been many tablets spread around the United States, many of which are not online, many of which there's no documentation of it, but he says, from Georgia to Ohio to Montana to New York. There's many more tablets that they found that I am not mentioning in this video simply because not everything is online. All of the tablets that we see on display in museums from around the world that tell you that these tablets are Assyrian, Babylonian, Sumerian in origin are truly from America. Hundreds of Michigan residents from around the 1830s till the 1920s found odd relics when digging on their property. Any media source on the Michigan relics will tell you that they are all fakes. Sure, maybe some are fakes, but they are 7,000 artifacts found by hundreds of people who never met each other. So at least some of them have to be authentic, logically speaking understand that the earliest of these artifacts were discovered as early as the 1830s and the tablets that they tell us are from the Middle East were also discovered in the late 1830s and after none before which is very coincidental that at the same time the Michigan relics were discovered the Middle Eastern cuneiform tablets were also discovered when we look at this excerpt from the book discovering the mysteries of ancient america it states when the last of the michigan mounds were excavated around 1920 approximately 7,000 mystery tablets have been removed some under controlled conditions what is controlled conditions classified conditions and attested by eyewitness swearing affidavits although the sheer magnitude of this statewide discovery made by literally hundreds of persons, most of them unknown to each other, argue convincingly on the behalf of its prehistoric authenticity. The mostly terracotta or baked clay artifacts were universally condemned as fakes by the Victorian scientists, but their ill-considered verdict may have concealed the truth about the Michigan tablets, namely that they were religious documents and teaching aids. But the truth of the Michigan tablets is that they were the remains of the Assyrian artifacts as well as even some Egyptian artifacts as the Assyrians and the Egyptians dealt with each other. And the ones that you see when you Google Michigan relics, for the most part, are indeed fakes. But then there are some that are real and are authentic. And there are some that are so important as they had to be reclassified of being from Middle Eastern origin. It is impossible for around the same exact time for 7,000 artifacts to just be faked by hundreds of different people who did not even know each other. One particular fact about the Michigan relics is that anywhere between 7,000 to 9,000 total relics have been found, but only 250 at most are shown to the public. Think about that. Where are the rest? Clearly the ones that we see on Google are completely fake. 
100%. They look like a non-artistic third grader drew them. They even have depictions of Christianity on it. Clearly we know this stuff is fake just to make the entire idea of the Michigan relics look fake. But there have been thousands of real Michigan relics. But for the most part, we don't see them on Google. Do you know why? Because during the same time the Michigan relics were found, guess what else was found? The Babylonian tablets, the Assyrian tablets, the Epic of Gilgamesh, so on and so forth, all throughout the Middle East apparently. Hmm, strange, right? And this is just from the state of Michigan alone. The mounds of Tennessee, Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, etc. all contained numerous artifacts and tablets that were excavated and hidden away by the Smithsonian or transported across the sea. In 1965, a copper medallion was discovered in Richfield, Utah. It is inscribed with cuneiform writing and appears to depict the Assyrian fertility goddess. The medallion also appears to display some Egyptian characteristics. This version is enhanced so the cuneiform writing is visible. Thank <laughs> you.